Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly. It's got a Ford Ranger. It's the 2.0 by Turbo. Side will start up. Exhaust filter over limit. We've got the symbols over there. It's got a diagnostic system running and going into the live data for the DPF. I'm going to select all of that. So we've got 22 on idle. Let's hold the revs up a little bit. Twenty at about three three thousand two hundred RPM, and we have let's go down or long one hundred and seventy two percent on the soot loading percentage there calculations. We'll go to the fall codes. See what we have here. So we've got the particle filter, soot restriction, P2463 and the P246C. We've got one here for the transmission, which we're not worried about. And this one here is going to be the likely cause which has caused the DPF to block up P007D air sensor circuit, temperature sensor for the uh, air inlet. Um, we have just called the parts department. They haven't got one in stock, so it's ordered for tomorrow. That will be fitted on. And then you've got engine oil deteriorated. So we're going to... On, a, on another video maybe we're going to do the oil and this one but for now we're just going to clean the DPF out once we've got this part in we'll fit that and do an oil service on these two or again likely what the customer wants to do himself is he's got his local mechanic and he said his local mechanic can't clean the DPF but he can do the service and do this so he might choose to take it there for that if we come just down here Right there we have the DPF pressure sensor, this one, so I'm just going to undo that little bracket see if we can just move it over to a little so it's a little bit more accessible. That is a 10 millimeter socket. And we just remove that clip and we'll be able to remove the tube there from the sensor now. Now we've got them separated, we've got the holes here, we can connect our DPF cleaning gun to that. So I'm using the Launch DPF cleaning gun and the Launch UK DPF gun particle filter cleaning fluid and it's hooked up to the compressor. Let's connect the gun into the holes there, so that comes back along to this. Get the fluid squeezed in there. So all the fluid has now been squeezed in, so when we use that we do use it water down with 50% dilution uh, of just tap water. The sensor back together. Okay all the sensors back together the fluid's been sitting in there for a few minutes and then we'll get ready to start the engine. Before we do that I'd like to say about the codes that were there. So we're gonna clean the DPF now. Now if you don't if you don't get the uh, that uh, part replaced for the air temperature sensor the DPF won't self-regenerate on its own and over time it will get blocked again so that needs to be replaced as soon as possible, if not the same time. If it's possible to do it at the same time, it's even better. But if you are going to clean the DPF, make sure you replace those parts uh, sort of immediately afterwards or within the next couple of days. Okay, so let's start the vehicle up. Let it idle for a minute. And we'll give it some accelerations. 
can't see any uh, roof counter on this. I don't know if it's because of because of some of these faults or not that we've got. That blue is low as well. Where's the roof count? There it is. So now we just need to run the engine until that pressure starts coming down. We'll hold it up at about 3000 RPM. Where's 3000 RPM there? It's a little bit higher up, there it is. So we'll just hold that for a few minutes. Okay, the vehicle's been idle for five minutes or so, so we're just gonna switch it off, switch the ignition on, and we're gonna attempt to reset the particle filter. Don't know if we're gonna have to do it through the special functions or a different menu, but one or the other. Let's try it this way first. Switch the ignition off, okay. Wait for it to power down. And that's now complete. So we will now take it on a test run. First we're gonna go back and clear the fault codes. Retrieve the codes. Sometimes they won't clear unless you read them first. Oh, we need to turn the ignition on. With the codes there, we'll press clear. Got the transmission one. So now that we've reset the DPF, if we come back in here, all of these values will be back to zero. So it'll do a new calculation now, come in compared to the new uh, pressure that's in the DPF. So it's a fresh start basically. You can see there we've still got a uh, warning light on for the AdBlue because it's low. The engine light is still on because of the gearbox malfunction. Now the gears are, when you accelerate this, it's changing gears like violently. Just chucking you about. I'm a test drive there for about 10 15 minutes. It doesn't come down as low as I liked, it's about 12 HPA, but you know these Fords when they're hot. Uh, that pressure is slightly higher when it cools down that will come down a fair bit so now we'll hold it up on 3000 rpm getting around about 80 come down slightly Um, now we're on 10 at idle. It'll, it'll keep coming down slowly. So just exit the uh, data stream, we'll go to the fall codes, retrieve the codes. So we've got those two codes, 
that transmission needs looking at uh, seriously because it's you can hear the gearbox grinding up and the customer has told me or this is not related to DPF but if you're looking at this and you drive a 4x4 four four, uh, please pay attention to what I'm saying once we've had snow there recently we had some we had some snow of course we had a little bit of heavy snow but on the roads themselves the snow wasn't that bad now for that whole, the customer has just told me for the whole week it was snowing he drove the vehicle around in four wheel drive uh, then it started making this grinding noise and changing gears violently you shouldn't ever use your uh, four wheel drive system on tarmac and if you do drive over a piece where there is some snow or, or mud or ice you can use your four wheel drive but as soon as you've got grip or as soon as you've come off of that area you need to switch it back to two wheel drive because you you will overheat the four wheel drive gearbox and damage it this gearbox I can hear it grinding up inside so he's probably damaged the transfer case or something like that so that's it all the faults have now gone and we are all done obviously the one is there for the gearbox and that's about it so we'll finish up so that's it we're all finished on the Ford Ranger see you on our next video